Who does Carl bring as his date to Julie's birthday party? I don't know who Carl is. Carl brings three, three young boys. Gross. To my good friend Bree Vandekamp, cooking is both an art form and a skill. It requires creative vision to prepare unique and interesting dishes. And an almost scientific precision is required to ensure success. It is the many intangibles. Determination, focus, and most importantly, persistence that separate the merely good from the great. Oh, I just love how Bree's like, fuck you, young child. <laughs> I prefer Honey, to place to Have you. Have a good day. Will tonight be another late night, or will you grace us with your presence for dinner? I'm sorry, hon. Things are still crazed at the office. With Dr. Evans away on vacation and me having to cover for him, Jackie and I can only get through the paperwork so quickly. I'm sure you just hate working those long hours with that lovely young secretary of yours. Don't be ridiculous! I agreed to cover Dr. Evans' patients so that he'll cover for me when we go on vacation. Dr. Evans could have found someone else. I think you just like spending your nights with a younger woman. <sighs> Look, I have to run. We'll talk about this later. Welcome back, Internet people. My name is Ryan, and today I am... playing Desperate Housewives with you, and being very angry at Cornell being such a giant piece of shit. I'm gonna do the dishes like a good housewife. I'm gonna be a model of perfection. Hello. Hello? With whom am I speaking? Please don't hang up. I've gone to a lot of trouble to track you down. I have some information regarding your husband that you may find very interesting. Who is this? Who I am is irrelevant. But what I have to say is of extreme importance. Alright there, seven of nine. Having been a victim of chronic infidelity myself, I feel compelled to let you know that your husband is... A cheating bastard? Look, I am truly sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but I wouldn't have called you if I didn't believe that something was going on. I have proof that your husband and his secretary are engaged in something more graphic that than... That son of a... Men are not to be trusted. I've been there far too many times myself. I just felt that as a woman, you deserve to know the truth. When you speak with him, you might want to ask about his safe. Why would I ask him about his safe? I think you'll find some very interesting and disturbing information contained in it. Ooh, this is getting juicy. You would be well served to try to get a peek at the contents of the safe. The combination is the date of your anniversary. My wedding anniversary? Thank you for calling. I know it must have been hard for you, and I appreciate it. And by it must have been hard for you, I mean... You're the person he's cheating on me with. Because his dick would be hard for you. I really liked that one. I thought it was really clever. Like I said, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Best of luck to you. We women need to stick together. Bye. God, you know what I should do? I should get a laugh track and start editing laughs into, this, into these videos. Oh. I'm gonna cook something for my terrible child. I'm gonna cook him a ham quiche. Is he just looking at himself in the mirror? Alright. Oh my god, look at all these ingredients and all of these steps. What have I gotten myself into? Gotta chop these. Oh my god, look at me go. I am a culinary fucking masteress. Uh, I gotta chop the green pepper. This is gonna be a fucking perfect thing. Gotta chop my onion. Fuck! I fucked up that onions very slightly. Uh, which I don't know which one of these is mayonnaise. <laughs> oh. Cornstarch, uh, cornstarch to bowl. Oops, I think I put the wrong thing into the bowl. Uh, I think I fucked up. Oh, egg rest. Chopped mozzarella, chopped cheddar, full cheese into mixture. 
chopped ham to the bowl, green peppers, and the onion, and you fucking stir it. You add the pie shell to the bowl, and you put the thing in the thing, and then you put the uncooked quiche. Bake until set. Look at this shit. Perfect. Perfect. Fuck you with your C on time! Here, stupid child, who should be at school right now, actually. It's 11 o'clock. Have your quiche. I'm leaving. Oh, I can get the most expensive plants now! Alright. Which one's the most expensive? The orchid is the most expensive. So, therefore, I'm gonna have... 24 orchids. Can you even fucking buy flowers from Sears? <laughs> I just realized that Sears logo in the corner. And, well, I didn't just realize. I realized that the first time I ever did this, but... Yeah, can you fucking buy pl flowers from Sears? I don't think that's a thing. Alright. Sea of, sea of purple. Perfect. Susan. Susan. <laughs> I think I interrupted her conversation with Julie. Now I feel like a creepo. Well, hello. You caught me right in the middle of cooking a new dish. You're cooking? I thought you hated cooking. I'm just working on my entry for the cooking contest. I usually have to make the dish four or five times before it's even edible, let alone tasty. I didn't know there was any contest going on. Who's holding the competition? Oh, it's just the local paper. The annual Fairview Tribune cook-off. Hey, you should really enter a dish. The winner gets their recipe published in the paper, and there are other prizes as well. It's a big deal around here. Well, since I have no one else to cook for these days, I may as well cook for a judge in a contest! And the best part is, you don't even have to think about whether you're going to win or lose. Bree always wins. <laughs> if she wasn't one of my closest friends, I'd hate her. What that woman can do with a few items from her spice rack, a little olive oil and a gnarly looking chicken is beyond me. You know, if someone were to mess with Bree's spices, I bet she'd have a hard time winning. Well, I guess. Who'd mess with Bree? I don't know. The way my life is going these days, I don't have the guts for anything. Hey, is everything okay? You look like something is bothering you. I can't tell you how tired I am of Cornell's crap. Oh, honey, what's the problem? Well, you can tell me. <laughs> I've been through it all. I think that bastard is having an affair with his secretary. Oh, I'm sorry. That's awful. Why did you come to talk to me about it? I don't know. I guess I just needed to talk to someone about it. Do you have any suggestions? You know, I haven't had the best of luck with men. I may not be the best person to ask. If you want a shoulder to cry on, though, I'm your girl. <laughs> oh, Susan, you're so dependable in your salmon-colored shirt. You'd think that by the time I hit my 20s, for the second time, <laughs> I would have figured out what makes men tick. If there's one thing I've learned, keep your man on a short leash. If he's busy and you stay in control of his schedule, there's far less chance of him canoodling with the secretary. That seems like terrible advice. On the other hand, you have to find out the truth. One thing I'll give Carl, he admitted everything to me when I confronted him. In far too much detail. Yeah, I don't want to be a control freak. That's all. That's a fucking bold face lie, Blanca Lewis. But I trust him less every day. Oh, look at that. You've redeemed yourself with a nugget of truth. Today, I even got an anonymous phone call from someone. They said they had proof he was cheating on me. I don't know what I am going to do. Wow, that's more serious than I thought. You really need to talk to your husband about this. You're getting into dangerous territory. You know, some men respond well to a firmer tone. The way a dog does. I guess I'll have to think of a way to fix the situation. Maybe you could help me. Oh, I'd love to, sweetie, but I can't imagine there's anything I can do. You know, I think I may just have the thing for you to do. I am going to call my husband and demand that he come home for dinner. 
If you could call at around 6 p.m. and say that you're sick, I'll send him over for a house call. That'll give me a chance to snoop around in his office. Wow, look at you. A woman with a plan. You're really taking charge. Yeah, all that shit about not wanting to control his life. Yeah, you could tell, like, immediately after that it was all bullshit. Okay, I'll call you around 6. Luckily for you, I'm a borderline hypochondriac. <laughs> so feigning a serious illness will be a piece of cake for me. I know. It's pretty devious. Thanks a lot, Susan. Just keep them occupied for 30 minutes or so. You know, this is kind of exciting. I mean, not that this isn't serious, but I don't get out much, and this sounds far more interesting than a night watching videos with microwave popcorn as my only companion. What about Julie? You seem to have a very healthy relationship with her. You could... Oh, right, you don't consider her to be a human being because she's your child, right? I really hope you don't find anything incriminating. I mean, I hope you're wrong about him. I'd like to see the two of you work out. Yes, Susan. I know what you mean. Thanks for all your help. Bye. Well, that was fun. Alright, I'm gonna do a cooking contest thing. I'm gonna cook a vermicelli soup. I'm so excited to cook a vermicelli soup. That had basically no ch no ch chopping involved, so it sucked. Oh well, I'll give them my shitty soup. If there's anything I can do, it's deliver soup to humans. Oh hey, look at this! Look at this woman just sitting in the middle of nowhere by herself. Hello! Are you here to enter the cooking contest? I sure am, little lady. Yeah, I know. I hate having to ask that, but my dad makes me. I haven't seen you around town. Hmm, what's your name? Emily Scott. Nice to meet you. My father is the food critic for the local paper. He's also the sole judge of this contest. Although sometimes he asks my opinion on certain dishes. Oh my god, please don't tell anyone I said that. Do you want to enter the cooking contest? Yes, as a matter of fact. Wait, no. Here's my entry, but I don't really expect to win anything. I hope your entry is more inspired than you seem to be right now. Oh my god, your your constant and like unrelenting optimism and positivity is making me want to shank you with the soup that I just gave you. I'll I'll freeze it into a, a dagger shaped object and just plunge it right between your eyes. We'll see what my dad thinks. Say, are you new around here? I don't recall seeing you before. I've never entered one of these things before. Well, I hope you're up to the challenge. There are always some really great dishes. At least I'll- at least I know I'll do better than Susan Meyer. She's a sweet woman, but my god. She's the first person I've ever met that literally can't boil water. Well, my father is the judge. He's the one you'll need to impress. I love Susan, but let's be honest. What that bitch not got any appreciable scales? I don't know what my face was. That woman doesn't have very many appreciable skills. I've decided that I dislike my hair. So I'm going to change it for different hair. I'm feeling this weird... hippie from the 70s hair. In black. Oh. Ah, yes. Mustard. Oh, I didn't buy it. Fuck me. Should I sabotage Bree's spice rack? She'll probably just win anyway. Alright, that'll be my excuse. Why can I sneak in during the middle of the day? Why is there no one home? That phone is gonna fucking go off. Use watch. Perfect. I guess the phone didn't go off. No one wants to talk to Bree. <laughs> I guess I can demand that he come home from for dinner now. I like how he doesn't have a name in this list. His name is Husband. Hello? I'm gonna cook a family dinner tonight. It will be served at 6 p.m. You know that work is overwhelming and there's just not Look, enough I've time tolerated to do everything. 
tolerated this long enough, be home for dinner, or you are going to need to find somewhere else to sleep tonight. But I have a patient at- No, what you have are firm dinner plans. See you then. A lot of cook in this episode. Grilled shrimp, grilled, 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 grilled shrimp scampi is what we're gonna have for dinner. Oh, it suddenly instantly became 6 p.m. Hey, hon. Ooh, smells great in here. What's cooking? A very tasty surprise. I've been looking forward to it since we talked. Family dinner is far too important to miss. I'm glad to hear that. I've missed you so much. That's one of those delightful boldface lies that Blanca is just notorious for telling. Well, in that case, let's sit down and enjoy this delicious... Hello? Oh, hello, Susan. Oh, no. I I'm sorry, but can I call you back? My wife and I are having a nice, quiet dinner and... Really? You have 102 fever and there are bumps everywhere? Oh, my God. Your hair is falling out in clumps? <laughs> Susan, you're the best. And you smell burnt toast, but you don't even have a toaster. Yes, Susan, that does sound really serious. But you see, honey, it's Susan Mayer from next door. She sounds like she's really sick. Oh, that's terrible. I hope it's nothing serious. You should go. I'll be fine, really. Are you sure? It sounds like I could be over there for hours, and I haven't even gotten to the second course yet. That's all right, dear. I'll run out and get some dessert for us while you're over at Susan's house. I didn't have time to make anything sweet earlier. Thanks for understanding. I'll make this as fast as I can. Susan, I'll be right over. Take your time. You go work your magic over there, and when you get back, we'll have a late night snack. This is gross. You're the best. I'll be back as soon as I can. He is choosing the best path to get to the front door, and then he uses it fucking before me. God, we should just get a fucking divorce already. I got concerned because that blue car down the street, I thought maybe it wasn't a Chrysler Pacifica. <laughs> Ooh, let's see what's in here. It's... Kelly Mandel. Fucking killer! Say cheese. You little bit. Come on, we both know why I'm here. So the question is, why you are here? Yeah, I know why you're here, all right. You're working on, oh, oops, I mean for my husband. Uh-huh, yeah, sure, okay. We both know that you're here because you don't trust your husband, plain and simple. All it takes is one little anonymous phone call to set you off. You Devious, conniving little tramp. You know, I knew from the first moment that I met you that you're not worthy of him. Besides, I think we both know that he is looking to move on from his starter wife. If it wasn't me, it'd be the next sweet thing to walk through. Seriously, enough of this. Let's talk civilly, because there are some things you need to understand. It is painfully obvious that you and your husband have been having problems. And frankly, I'm tired of waiting for both of you to come to the realization that your marriage is over. All I'm doing is helping to speed up the inevitable. Listen, little girl. My husband and I may have our troubles, but when we get through them... One moment I'm having a stroke, it's a good thing that I'm in a medical office of some kind. But we get through them together. That's what marriage is all about. You think you know your husband? He's just like all men. All he needs is a little more convincing to realize that his marriage is over. A few more late nights and he won't even remember what you look like naked. More importantly, he won't want to. How can he forget? I literally walk around the house with barely any clothes on, uh, specifically after 10 p.m. I don't think you understand. If I can't have him, no one will want him. I'll destroy his reputation, he'll lose his license, and we know what that will do to his fragile male ego. So back off. So if I were you, I'd start worrying about how difficult it is for a woman of your age to find available single men. Just a friendly warning. Gotta go. Bye. 
Joke's on you! Joke's joke's on you. I fucked like eight guys. So is there nothing in the thing? Alright. I guess I sort this out in the morning. I think that's a good spot to make an episode! It's getting juicy. Much like my, um, my booty in these booty shorts. Uh, thanks for watching.